Hello everyone. Welcome back to our Inartica demo showcase. Today we will be showcasing the demo for the Inartica multi vendor admin panel. The admin panel is divided into two sections. The first being the vendors panel and the other being the super admin panel. What you're seeing currently is the super admin panel. And if we move over to the restaurants tab and click on an entry, it will open up the vendor panel or restaurant dashboard. Now, to clarify, the vendor has access to the restaurant only, while the super admin has access to everything. We'll come back to that in the demo once we move on to the restaurants tab. Now, once you're logged in, the first thing you see is the vendors tab. In this section, you can add multiple vendors using their credentials. You can add different restaurants for each vendor by clicking the restaurant button under action. After clicking the restaurants button, you will be given a prompt to add a new restaurant. Clicking on this opens up a new window where you can add the restaurant's details, including its unique username, password, its name and address, as well as set the delivery time, the minimum order, and the sales tax. You can also choose to toggle it between available and unavailable. You can also upload an image for each restaurant, and once that's done, you can just click on the save button and the restaurant will be added to that vendor. Next, in the restaurants tab, you can enable or disable different available restaurants. You can open the restaurant dashboard by clicking on each individual entry. Here, you can manage the entire restaurant from specific food to the zones that it will operate in. You can also click on each restaurant to see the dashboard for each particular one. In the dashboard, let's take a look at the food tab. Here, you can add food items from your restaurant's menu. You can assign any name to the food items you have, add descriptions for each and upload images. You can also place them in different categories which you can create in the tab right below food. You can categorize food items into different categories as well. Different food items can have different variations. For example, a restaurant might offer a single patty as well as a double patty option for the same burger. You can also assign the price for each variation, as well as upload an image for each food item. You can also choose to create an add-on for that specific food item. Add-ons can be items like drinks, sides, condiments, etc. Let's add a new entry with the title, drinks. Now we can add the option for drinks, which can be anything like Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, etc. You can also choose to make it optional or compulsory. Inputting a value higher than zero means that the add-on is compulsory, otherwise it will be optional. You can also set the maximum number of an add-on that a customer can get. Once all of that is done, all you need to do is save and then it will be added to the list of add-ons available to the customer. Now, let's move on to the rest restaurant sections tab. Here, we can make new sections available to the customer to promote the current deals and promotions like home cooks, etc. For example, we already have two, two sections. One is home food and the other one is new on an article. They are disabled right now. And if we enable them, they will show up in the customer app as well. Next, in the Riders section, the Riders information is included in our database and they are assigned a specific username and password. Scrolling down, we can see the details of the different Riders that we've added. From this list, we can change the availability of each Rider, as well as edit or delete each entry. Now, let's talk about zones. In the Zones tab, we can create different zones according to the availability and location of the riders. For the purposes of this demo, we have created two broad zones of East and West. The East zone covers the entire Eastern Hemisphere of the world and the West zone covers the West. If you want to create a new zone, you can give a title for each zone and also a brief description. For example, let's start by creating a zone. By clicking on the map, you can add different points to your zone. You can also expand it or shift it by clicking and dragging. Once you're satisfied with the zone you've mapped out, go ahead and click the save button and your newly created zone will be added to the list below. Now, if you want to create zones for your restaurant, go back to the restaurant tab. Now, once you're there, Click on any of the entries 
in the list and it will open up the restaurant's dashboard. From here, you can click on the location tab and assign a location for the restaurant. You can click on the draw delivery bounds button to map out your preferred delivery zone for the restaurant. The button right next to it allows you to set the location of your restaurant. The two buttons below that allow you to uh, remove the delivery bounds as well as remove the restaurant location. Now let's move on to the dispatch tab. If for some reason no rider is able to pick up the order, you can manually assign them through the super admin panel. Next, in the coupon section, you can create a coupon using a unique name along with a unique code with the discount you would like to offer. Now let's move on to the notifications tab. These are global notifications. Once you fill in the fields of the title and the body of the notifications, you can then send them out as push notifications that all of your customers will receive at the same time. Let's move on to the commission rates tab. In the commission rates tab, we can set our rates for each restaurant. This is integrated with Stripe using the split checkout feature. For example, when a customer places an order using Stripe, the restaurant gets a set percentage of their commission while you get yours. So it's split between the two, the restaurant and the platform. Finally, let's look at the section of withdraw request. This section is for the riders. Whenever a customer pays for their order online, the rider's earnings for that order is saved to their wallet. They can retrieve the amount from the wallet by making a withdrawal request. This is manually handled by the platform owners. And that's it for the demo. Thank you for watching and stick around on our channel to make sure that you are up to date with all of the other demos on our channel.